Hello, today we're going to be talking about these two boxes. Uh, what's inside the boxes? Well, we shall find out in a second. These two boxes were sat next to uh, the last week's videos box, which was the Foreman. So if you haven't noticed, there might have been a New Year's resolution about a certain shelf that had a few boxes on top of it. Anyway, let's have a closer look. So these boxes, like other boxes on the shelf, are basically full of projects that I got started on, I got working on, and then for some reason, some problem came up and the enthusiasm sort of disappeared. They ended up in boxes, which are then put on a shelf to be continued. And I knew that one day these would open again to get done for a video, but when, I'm not sure. And I don't even know yet whether these videos and what I'm talking to you is even gonna be the video. I might find the problem, remember what it was, and then put it back on the shelf and two years later, we're gonna do this thing again. So I might be talking to myself right now. We just don't know yet. Anyway, right here is the, uh, I need to remember what they are. What is it? It's been so long. Feedback devices, educational test equipment. So yeah, basically it's miniature educational test equipment. I found it in a job lot on eBay a good couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, I bought them thinking it was a cool idea. And then I found a problem that we'll talk about in a mo. And I had a solution to that problem, but my enthusiasm ran out before I managed to solve that, do that solution. Because the solution's relatively time consuming, but we're gonna do the relatively time consuming solution today. Anyway, uh, let's have a closer look at what we have in hither. Uh, I'm gonna pick one up, this one. Uh, it's, uh, if you cannot tell already, that is a speaker. It's a speaker module for external speakerage. Uh, we got, what we got? Oh, we got a oh, low pass filter. Oh, it's a clicky one. So we got a clicky low pass filter. Oh, oh, what else do we have in here? Oh, we got a VCO. And this is where the problem is. Uh, we'll talk about that problem in a little bit. It might be, uh, this might be a bit of a giveaway. Do a little bit of a zoom in. 1.28 megahertz. Yep, you might start getting an idea of what the issue is here. Uh, we've got a, another VCO, voltage controlled oscillator, yet again. And yep, 1.28 megahertz, yet again. What do we got? Oh, another VCO. Let's see what else we got? Oh, 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 another VCO. 1.28 megahertz. Well, um, we've got a carrier phase shifter. <gasps> we've got another VCO. <gasps> and, and another speaker. And another VCO. Ooh. Let's get it all out. Let's get it all out. Okay, we've got. <gasps> Guess what? Another 1.28 megahertz VCO. Oh, all these VCOs are nowhere to go. Uh, low pass filter yet again. <laughs> Double balanced modulator. Very interesting indeed. Uh, we got these, which are pretty cool. These are the power supplies. So you plug all of the modules into the front via one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pin din connectors. We got two of those. Right, this is this is the big mama box. This is when it gets interesting. There's some big boy ones in here. So we got this one, which is a Finger Magoop 5000. Data recovery. We got the data format, whatever that is. We got data source, not tomato source, not not brown source, but data source. We got a, uh, a a circuit board from a VCO. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, data clock regeneration. Lovely. Data, oh, it's receiving. That is everything in those boxes. Okay, so if you haven't guessed already, the reason that uh, these are still in the box and not really being used is this is for RF test equipment. So the 1.28 megahertz, which is very high, considering we can only hear between 20 and 18, 16, 17 kilohertz, megahertz, whoo, it's way up there, way beyond doggy zeros as well. There was a solution that I found and that was using the phase modulator, using the heterodyne principle, the beat frequency. So two oscillators ended up beating off each other. So this is the first setup we're gonna use in this video. We've got a power supply. All of them are plugged into the power supply. These two VCOs, oscillators, this double balance modulator and the audio module, which is just the speaker we're gonna hear out of. We've got a little microphone here, the Rhodes mic that's gonna be listening. Hopefully it'll pick it up. So like I said, the VCOs are at 1.28 megahertz. It's blooming high, and if we put this into the audio input, you're not gonna hear it. Not even dogs are gonna hear it. It's, it's so high up there. But if we plug the output of the oscillator into the input of this modulator, and then another oscillator into it, we'll hear the beat frequency between these two oscillators. We're gonna plug it into the output. 
Oh my God, that's really high. So this is the beat frequency between these two oscillators. If you look at the oscillators by Brule and Kier, for instance, you'll see they're called beat frequency oscillators. That's because there's two oscillators inside of it beating off of each other. And a theremin also works in a very similar principle. We're now gonna slightly adjust one of the oscillator's frequencies. So we're gonna plug another banana jack into the control input of this VCO, and we're just gonna use this, which is just a voltage offset on this knob. So we're just gonna plug it into that, and it's just gonna give us plus and minus five volts. Now we're going to be able to adjust the beat frequency between these two oscillators because this one is going to change frequency. Oh, oh, it's still blooming high and it's not very friendly to use. I took this oscillator apart to see if I could make a modification to bring them down to audio rate and also having them over a useful control voltage. But I didn't have much luck because I couldn't find many alternatives of these ones. But it's probably a good thing because we could keep these original and unfettled. So we're going to build an oscillator or so into boxes like this with some added perks because if we're building one, we can make it actually interfaceable with other synthesizers. I wasn't sure how best to do this part of the video because I got a little bit carried away. I ended up building a lot more than I was planning to build. This one in particular is just an oscillator built on a Curtis chip. So it's basically an analog synth in a box for this. I also built a hex oscillator, which is six oscillators in a box, quite simple. Uh, and then I built this sequencer, which is based on a 4051 multiplexer chip. So it's a sequencer with a bit of a twang. I didn't know how best to put these into the video. So I've uploaded the full length build progress of me talking about them over on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out over there. So I've been busy cobbling together a few uh, modules inside these boxes. I've pretty much built a, a whole new synth in this time in cases. And uh, <laughs> let's have a closer look at what the fudge these things are, shall we? So yeah, I got a little bit carried away and I decided to build, well, actually four cases. This first one is a simple converter. Around the back there's literally a wire connecting this to this to this to this and then all the grounds to these two. So it just means that if you plug in a big jack you could either convert it to the output of a banana jack or a mini banana jack like these. I thought it was important for this one. The first one that I built is this one. It's based on a Curtis chip. It's just a VCO, an oscillator, so we can get some tuned stuff out of this if we want to by plugging it into a BeatStep Pro or something like that. There's a pitch, there's an attenuation, there's a PWM, and there's also a clock divider based on a 4024 chip. Ooh! The second one I decided to build was this big mama. This is a hex oscillator. The idea being with this one is it adds a few more square wave modulations like uh, slow LFOs and stuff like that. It's based on the 40106 chip. The schematic is here. That schematic's a little bit rough around the edges. I cobbled it together as I went and both of these are made on the hack modular breadboard style strip board layout that's right here. And then finally last night I put this together which is a sequencer. It's a weird sequencer though because it doesn't actually require clock input. It requires a binary number via these right here. You'll see it in a bit and it means that it won't just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'll jump all over the place depending what you plug into these A, Bs and Cs. As you can hear, this one's pretty fun. It's based on a 4051 chip. All of the videos of full time making these because I couldn't figure out how to actually make it fit in this video are available over on my Patreon. The schematics are here, of course, but if you want to see me building it from start to finish, including the breadboard, then check out each of these free videos. They're about three or four hours long each. Let's first see what we can do with these modules alone. The ones that I built, uh, which I basically just built a whole new synth. I don't even need the test equipment anymore. What a donut. Right, let's plug them in. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? So if we plug in the first output from the divider just into the A input, it will just bounce between one and two. In fact, we'll go down to the slowest one. We'll speed it up a bit. But if you want to go for more, we plug in the next one into B and it'll go up to four like that. And if we plug in the final one into C, we'll get up to eight of them. Ooh, very nice. That's just... That's just the clock speed. But then if we plug the output into itself, so the output of the knobs into the input of this. You'll notice that this is being controlled by this, but this is controlling this as well. Now let's mess around with the arrangements of this. Let's see what happens.
And then plug in some of these up here, swap them around. Right, let's take this stuff, plug it into the test equipment and see what the fudge happens, shall we? If you're aware of a DIY synthesizer type called a Lunetta synthesizer, which is basically using CMOS chips, like the chips in here, and making synthesizers out of them, well, this is a very similar thing. I've kind of built a Lunetta synth in a style of kind of build anyway. Let's, uh, let's get the audio out. Let's go for the triangle. Yeah, that's nice. Right, let's uh, start. Let's get this in. And then, um, oh, no, 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 we'll go down, we'll start high, pop in the output and get that into the control voltage input. Oh, oh. So the higher the note plays, the quicker this actually gets flicked over, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, right, let's, get, let's do stew normal. Let's mess it up a bit. Oh, that's kind of cool. You're getting different rhythms every time you twist a knob. Instead of a straight voltage going into the input, we're literally going to wire the actual square wave into that. So it kind of makes this turn on and off on every clock pulse. What? It's so unpredictable. Now we can get. Get the hex square wave one that I built plugged in as well. I'm just gonna keep on stacking them up. Look how many banana jacks we got stacked in over here. Plug that one into that one. And then plug this one into that one. Oh no, that sounded quite good. Making a little bit fancier with a bit of reverb. Right, anyway, let's reset this and uh, start integrating some of the test equipment into this because, you know, this is just... This is just ridiculous. We're gonna wire in the data source now. This, I really like these ones because they act like a bit of a bit crusher. They're really cool. Right, so, yeah, here we go. Oh, it sounds so good, that. This data source and the filter are basically the crowning jewels of the test equipment setup. As you can see, I had to build the rest of it. Right, let's plug this into it somehow. So we get the NRZ data out. Let's go for the analog output. Yeah, and we're gonna plug that into this. Oh, oh, we're, get, we're getting something. I don't know what it is, but we're getting something. Two errors, uncorrectable. Huh? Right, uh, let's swap this uh, with something else. We got the data format. So this is probably another bit crusher style thing. Puts into the other bits input. Oh.
Getting another one, the double balanced modulator. So we've got a drum beat and then we're going to get this going through this. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. I think the next one I need to build is a mixer module because... Oh! That's getting close. Copia of sound, noise predominantly. And yes, I wouldn't expect people to want to be listening to this, but by gosh, it is fun to do it. And yeah, I spent a good few couple of days uh, building these things to make that noise. And I do not feel any remorse for that. It cheers me immensely to know I've built these silly things that work really well with these. I want to build more boxes now. I want to make an ultimate Lunetta synthesizer thing. Oh, I love it. What do you think to these machines? As ever, there'll probably be a part two with more of these synth boxes. Uh, the schematics I've included for these ones, but if you want to watch the full length videos of me building these, uh, this one was two and a half hours. This one was three hours. This one was three and a half hours. Well, those are available over on my Patreon from breadboarding up to finishing these things. And I've also just uploaded a bunch of sounds from these synthesizers that you can chop up and use to your will and liking and that is available over on Patreon as well because they're fun silly things like this. Anyway that's it for today from the feedback instruments, test equipment and these random boxes that I built. I'm look mum no computer I've got to clean up these wires have a lovely time and don't forget to subscribe that was good to try.